Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Urshan, and this week we are taking a look back at a beloved franchise in the annals of horror history, and that is Britain's Hammer Films. The Hammer Horror Era, folks. Classic, I love it. And I just want to talk about a little some of my favorites, a little of some of the history of Hammer Films, and uh, just want to talk about how much I love it. And, uh, and one of the things I love so much about Hammer is that gothic flavor, that classic British feel. And uh, it's so classy to me. And uh, so a little bit of the history of Hammer f Productions. Uh, it started in the 30s. And uh, they started with a lot of, uh, you know, murder mystery type movies and, uh, you know, some adventure serials like the Quartermass films. Uh, it wasn't until the 50s where they really hit their stride when they started delving into the horror genre. And, uh, and that all started with this little bad boy, The Curse of Frankenstein. And that's how they got their really started getting noticed when they started taking on those classic tales of monsters which had previously been done by Universal Studios. You know, those classic stories like Frankenstein and Dracula and the Wolfman and the Mummy, all those classic uh, monster tales. And they did it with such class and enthusiasm and uh, they had those great soundtracks. Uh, they had that great horror feel and that uh, the great gothic feel with the you know with the old haunted castles and the beautiful visuals and that classic period setting and uh i love uh that i love their uh gothic feel on on horror they just had their own way about doing the horror genre and uh i love the curse of frankenstein it's a great film with excellent performances by Peter Cushing as Dr. Frankenstein. Uh, wild, crazy, you know, wild-eyed performance. I love it. And uh, nothing's going to stop him from what he's trying to do, his crazy experiments and uh, his abominations of man that he's creating. And uh, his assistant tries to help him and tries to get him out of, you know, dude, you're... You're nuts. You're going crazy, going over the top. This is not about science anymore. This is just about your delusions of grandeur and your complete madness. And uh, he tries to get him to stop what he's doing. And also, uh, he has his uh, wife, uh, who is this beautiful, gorgeous uh, woman with a big flowing gown and uh and that's that classic hammer feel as well. These beautiful women in these beautiful old style gowns and gorgeous with their hair done up to the nines and the beautiful makeup. And oh, that's just that staple of hammer films, those gorgeous women. And uh, a lot of them are fantastic actresses. And uh, it's funny though, this girl's real naive. Uh, she's married. She just married him. She barely knows the guy, and she has no clue what he's off doing behind the scenes. It's just funny how she's so naive. She just thinks he's this wonderful guy, but he's really insane behind the scenes. He's creating this monster uh, created from dead human parts and using a, the brain of a murderer, <laughs> you know? And he's basically a zombie come back to life full of dead tissue um it's just that classic tale of frankenstein i love and it's definitely the best version of frankenstein outside that classic universal mo movie with boris karloff and uh so once that was a big hit the curse of frankenstein that fran that turned into a whole franchise it was about i don't know 10 of those movies this frankenstein created woman uh, Frankenstein must be destroyed. Uh, and they all starred Peter Cushing as the, uh, the crazed Dr. Frankenstein. 
Um, so those are the two big act actors in the Hammer legacy, and that is Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Uh, so many of their classics had either Peter Cushing or Christopher Lee, or both in the same film. Uh, so then they went and did The Mummy, and uh, that was a big hit as well. Uh, that starred Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee as the monster. And also they did The Horror of Dracula. They took on the legendary Dracula story. And woof, let me tell you, that was their greatest achievement ever. Um, because the horror of Dracula is the absolute best vampire movie ever, in my opinion. It's just got everything you would want in a vampire film. You got the greatest vampire of all time, Count Dracula. Um, played absolutely brilliantly by the great Christopher Lee. He's so menacing. Uh, he's tall. He's got the, the great manners. He's debonair. He's suave. Uh, and he really has a way, he just has such a commanding presence. Uh, he's absolutely menacing. And uh, when he gets a hold of those women, boy, it becomes a real seductive power. And you see that crazed look in his eyes and he's seducing the women. And, uh, and it's kind of funny, it becomes real sexual too, the hammer version of Dracula. Uh, you really see that sensual, like, sexual side to it. Um, you see the women, uh, when, when Dracula comes in the window or through one of the doors, they leave the window. They purposely open the window so he can come in. They invite him in. And uh, it's funny, you see they'll, they'll lower their dress like this so he can bite them. You know? They want it, they want it. <laughs> and I, I really like that aspect of the uh, Hammer Dracula's. Um, but, but yeah, so they had a whole other uh, successful franchise on their hands with the Dracula films, and those continued for a long time. And uh, Christopher Lee starred in about seven of them. And so you had the horror of Dracula, you had the Prince of Darkness, uh, you had Dracula has risen from the grave, you had... Uh, Taste the Blood of Dracula, you had The Scars of Dracula, you had Dracula A.D. 1972, um, and a lot of them, uh, later, of uh, some of those later Draculas really dealt with a lot of occult stuff, you know, satanic cults trying to conjure up Dracula with black masses. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, it was a different kind of take on the Dracula legend, which I enjoyed. And then they had the final performance of Christopher Lee and also Peter Cushing returning for one last outing, and that is the Satanic Rites of Dracula. The final showdown between Ven Helsing and the Count Dracula. And then the last one you had uh, Count Dracula himself had her like satanic cult going and uh he was he got all these crazy people together in this cult uh sacrificing young virgins and uh he's trying to bring about the plague a deadly plague that would basically wipe out the whole planet and leaving no one in charge except dracula and there's no one left to take him on except Van Helsing, he's the only man that can stop the evil Count Dracula. Love it. <laughs> Love the franchise. And there were also a couple others in the franchise that didn't have Christopher Lee as Dracula, but did have Peter Cushing as Van Helsing, and that is uh, the Brides of Dracula, and uh, also this the, the Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. <laughs> he was in that one too, which mixed vampires and kung fu like i don't know what the hell they were doing with that one uh but that was the later era of hammer where they were really starting to go downhill going off the rails there <laughs> uh but yes hammer kept knocking out classics left and right uh he also took on the werewolf genre with the curse of the werewolf another excellent film starring oliver reed 
And uh, he also did a movie called The Gorgon with Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, another classic, uh, taking on the Gorgon monster of legendary uh, mythological fili- uh, figure from Greek mythology. And uh, another great movie. Um, and they kept doing a lot of vampire stuff. And uh, and what happened was they had a hard time uh, competing with some of the other, like the American horror films where they were getting more... Actually, horror in general was just getting more modern where Hammer was still stuck in the past with that gothic feel and those period set movies uh, that take place in like medieval times and renaissance era and all that with the classic gowns and the you know the gentlemen wearing the uh the, the puppy shirts and the <laughs> and uh that classic british hammer feel you know um it kind of uh started to wear on the fans you know um they had a hard time coming up with new stuff they were still stuck in that those era of the monsters and the vampires and the werewolves where horror was changing was started becoming more realistic into modern times with uh modern menaces like uh like the texas chainsaw massacre um, brutality like that. You had the Night of the Living Dead with the zombies and, the, and it had real graphic brutality and a lot of gore and, uh, you know, Hammer was always like kind of PG. That it, it had a little bit of blood here and there, but it's never over the top. And uh, also in films, you had a lot of sexuality, and especially in the 70s, late 60s, the movie started becoming real graphic with nudity and uh, over the top blood, and uh, Hammer was try couldn't keep up with that, you know. Um, but they did try, you know. They tried to inject a lot more sexuality to their movies, a lot more graphic blood and duty. Um, but still, they had a lot of that, you know. It was still set in that period style, you know. Um, but they did have a couple excellent films in the later era that often get overlooked. Like this bad boy, The Vampire Lovers, starring the lovely Ingrid Pitt as a menacing vampire. Um, just an excellent movie. And definitely one of my favorite ha- Hammer Horror films. It also was, I believe, the, the film that started the lesbian vampire era. <laughs> um, so once they came out with that, that did... Uh, trigger a lot of other lesbian themed vampire films from other studios like uh and directors like gene Rowland and uh his films like requiem for a vampire and then you had a uh, vampire lesbos by jesus franco he had, he did a lot of movies like that as well um so yeah that was kind of an interesting time and i think that's and they turned that into a whole trilogy called the Constein Trilogy, uh, which is based on the uh, novels Carmilla, which is one of the oldest vampire stories. Um, but they, you know, they really sexed it up, you know. Uh, the second one, I believe, was called The Lust for a Vampire. And then the third one was Twins of Evil, which was another highly critically acclaimed one, on which starred also starred Peter Cushing as well. And, uh, but so those were some of the last good Hammer films because the quality really started to degenerate after a while. They were trying too hard and uh, the results were not coming in. You know, the movies were not successful and they couldn't stay afloat and eventually they, uh, they went downhill. Also want to mention another great Ingrid Pitt classic, Countess Dracula, which is another excellent film based on a true story, which I always thought was real interesting, of this this old countess called Elizabeth Battery, uh, who, who uh, murdered like 600 women, you know, it's like probably the first serial killer in history. 
Uh, she killed hundreds of women. And, and uh, she had this idea of uh, that young virgin's blood would keep her young. And I always found that really fascinating. Of course, in the film, they take that to the ninth degree, you know. <laughs> but she actually does become young with each person that she kills. Uh, and then... And then eventually she just becomes a beautiful, you know, young woman. But that's a great movie too. Check out Countess Dracula starring Ingrid Pitt. Legendary, the beautiful Ingrid Pitt. One of my favorite uh, vixens of the Hammer era. But there's so many beautiful women from the Hammer uh, films, you know. They're like models. <laughs> a lot of them probably were, I'm sure. Uh, but at any rate, thank you for joining me and celebrating the legacy of Hammer Horror Films. If you haven't seen any of these films, run and grab every Hammer collection you can find because there's so many great classics in the Hammer canon. Um, just This is just a few classics of, that I have. Uh, I want to really build my library up a lot more. I only have a few, but definitely want to get a lot more of those Hammer classics. Um, but definitely one of the greatest legacies in the history of horror films. So if you don't know Hammer, you don't know nothing about horror, buddy. So get on it. Do your research and delve into the history of horror with Hammer's films. Thank you for joining me, Sean Patrick Gershon, in the Horror Corner. Tune in and stay scared.